this is the second uh, part of the tutorial. And here I want to focus on creating a theme in uh, the resource editor. So let's start by actually creating the theme. You just go here, click plus, and enter whatever name you want for the theme. And it will essentially create a new theme for you. Now, currently the theme is empty. And on your right, you can see the, pre the resource editor uh, Lua Demo Midlet uh, that's embedded in. You can replace this preview with your own application, although that's completely optional. And I'll show you something in that regard soon. If you're using the UI Builder, you will see here um, uh, different forms that you've designed in the UI Builder. And you can actually pick them and select to customize them as you wish. But let's start with uh, this basic theme and how we can modify it and what actually um, modifications mean. So first of all, we have several tabs here. Unselected, selected, pressed, and disabled, and constants. Unselected essentially means all the components that don't have focus, which means all of these are unselected, the background is unselected, the menu, everything, practically most of the stuff you'll see is unselected. So this is the more, most important tab because most things don't have focus. Selected indicates the style for things that do have focus, like themes in this particular uh, version. Pressed means uh, mostly for buttons and things like that. When they are pressed, they get a different style. Disabled uh, means for components that don't have that, that are disabled essentially that can't be interact with the user and constants is for various types of definitions that you might have. Here we have two columns, uh, and this is true for all the four of these. Selector and value. Those of you coming from CSS will find these uh, relatively familiar, although the CSS selector is a lot more complicated than what we have. And we tried to keep it relatively simple, but it's still the hardest part within the resource editor is this. Uh, selector means what component are you trying to modify? And we have two levels of selectors, the global selector. For instance, I want to change the foreground color for everything. So I just change uh, the foreground or maybe the background color in this particular case. I can change and I can to black. As you can see, everything updates immediately. I can change my default foreground color to be uh, green. I can obviously change it using a bit more um, UI friendly uh, sort of thing, um, sort of dialogue, and I can change it by default for everything. I can also change it by default just for the selected component or just for the press components. So this is very convenient for me to define a global selector that applies to the entirety of, uh, of Lewitt's components. But usually it's a problem. Usually I want to define something only for a particular component or for a particular um, type of component usually. So for this, I need a specific selector. For instance, if I'm selecting a form and here I have most of the components in Lewitt, so you can also type in your own custom components right here. You can actually invent whatever component name you wish. And I say, say want my component to have a background gradient, I can have it use a background image or anything like that. So I can define it to have a background, um, for instance, radial gradient. As you can see, this is a radial gradient. And right now it's only from black to white, nothing else. So I can just uh, copy this and control C, control V works. And I can do um, define the gradient colors and this position. So I can define a, it's a blue to uh, white gradient. Oh, no, that's actually a blue. Blue to black is good. Or blue to deep blue, maybe. Um, maybe something like this. Mm, maybe a bit less. So, uh, what's about this? Maybe the other way around. Uh, yeah, that's better. Now let's move it around a bit. Here we go. I can actually define everything. I can define the 
size of the gradient and its position, and it looks much better. Um, let's define that everything is transparent so we can see through everything. So I can just uh, define here transparency to be zero, and that's it. Notice that the selected button is still opaque. And this is because for selected styles, we haven't defined transparency. So I want it to, for translated styles as well. So here now we can see through everything. Notice that I didn't define selected versions for the form because the form never gets focus, only specific individual components. Now notice that this now applies to everything. Even the menu has become transparent now. So um, I can actually define everything in a global way and specifically for the form, this applies globally regardless. The problem is identifying which components apply to what. Now, the Lua resource editor tries to help you there. For instance, I'm pointing at these components and they're demo buttons. They're defined by the, by the Lua demo and they're unique for the Lua demo. And so we needed to customize them specifically. So they're demo buttons. And you can actually see this uh, little thing jumping here. I can right click it and it automatically creates the dialog with the text in it. So I can customize the demo button to be translucent. So I can define transparency to be um, 100. And you can actually see some transparency now. But, but that looks ugly. I don't want that. So I'll cancel and go right back. Um, now, the thing there's a title, obviously, and things like that. There's a soft button area, and you can customize things pretty much like that uh, and discover things on your own. You can also define um, lots of other attributes. Uh, alignment, uh, colors, obviously, the background image, the behavior of the background image, uh, borders. That's an interesting thing. Uh, you can inherit, inherit from a different style. And you can define fonts, margins, and paddings, and even underlines and transparency and things like that. So let's play around a bit with a few of these, and let's try and do it maybe with a more elaborate uh, example. For instance, let's say I want to have a more attractive border around things here, uh, something rounded. So the thing is that forms usually have a content pane within them. And I can customize that content pane. I can define for it a border. And borders can be practically anything. I can define round, etched, uh, pretty much anything that I want. So let's create a nice white border and give it a big arc like this and place it on the content pane like this. And you can see the edges of the border. The thing is that it's not very visible. And because the content pane is transparent, I can't really see uh, the border itself. So let's define the content pane's transparency to be opaque, like this. And now we can see the border. And let's define some padding for the margin, sorry, margin. Now, what's the difference between margin and padding? Margin is what you get around the component. And padding is what you get within the component. Yeah, that's a rounded direct border for the content pane. And it looks actually reasonably nice, but it's not as nice as it could be. So let's try to create something even more stunning with transparency. So here we have a, a border wizard that was introduced in the latest fluid. And you can use your own images rather than use the images generated by this. But let's start off with this. And let's make something partially translucent. Now, that's too much. Um, maybe something like this, what, something that we can see through. And it will generate this image for us. And the thing is that this image is too, um, uh, needs to be cut in order to uh, show itself properly. So here we cut a nine image border. Uh, as you can see, 
the nine image border works like this. We essentially um, cut the bottom and top portions like this. So this becomes an image, this becomes an image, the center has its own image, and you can actually see all nine images that will be cut. And these will apply to the content pane component. So let's apply them like this. I can type this here, or I can pick the content pane from this combo box, just like in the standard resource editor. And I can apply it to the unselected content pane. Let's generate. And this looks much better. Now, what did I do here? I created a new border that's essentially based on images. And I can see these images here. So this is the image I gave to the bottom portion. This is the image I gave to the top portion, to the sides, and to the center. And Lewitt essentially draws the corner images appropriately, and the side images, and then fills in the center. And it does it pretty much seamlessly for you, and it works globally. So I can just go throughout, and it will work with everything that we have. Uh, so this is just, uh, in a nutshell, the first portion of how to customize uh, the resource editor. I'll uh, join you again next time and show you a bit more elaborate examples with uh, the GUI builder. Until next time.